Um, and I like how you just mentioned the technicalities around sprouting, around the fact that we also need to farm potatoes with irrigation. Because, you know, without water, farming does become a little bit tricky, especially with high value crops such as potatoes. So, you know, we've had a lot of rains around December, January, February period. And um, with, with your knowledge and, and maybe uh, the farmers that you've worked with, how have they um, mitigated the risk? Good day, podcasters. Thank you so much for joining the Private Property Farming Podcast, bringing to you yet another episode of the Farming Podcast discussing all things agriculture. Um, as I always mention on the show is that if you have any topics, comments, questions that you want to share with us, please do reach out to us right here on the Farming Podcast. You're catching us live on YouTube and we're happy to engage with you and obviously explore topics that you want to hear hear about let us unpack it with our experts guests and um, this is what the podcast is for at the end of the day so today we have Mr. Andre Dutoy um, joining us and he's the manager at Bayer Crop Division our topic today we're going to be focusing on potato farming you know pro how do you make profit out of potatoes um, how do you farm potatoes the pros and cons of farming potatoes or maybe broadening it a little bit um, into veg into vegetable farming. Uh, if you don't know about Bayer, um, I guess you should take out your laptop, your phone, and just Google them. They're a big international company um, that deals with crop protection, pesticides, a lot of varieties. And I think Andre is going to be able to unpack some of their services and what they do, particularly in his portfolio. And let's just tap into his expertise um, just to learn more about potato farming, the pros and cons around vegetable farming. How do we make a profit out of it? How do we grow our farming enterprises to become profitable over and above the pressures that we as farmers face and maybe tap into the value chain as well. So if you have any questions, like always, to Mr. Andre, please feel free to comment. Um, let's get straight into it and introduce Andre. Andre, thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing? Molly, uh, thank you very much now. I'm doing well. Yes, uh, just uh, thank you for that introduction. Um, my title with Bayer is the go-to-market uh, manager uh, for potatoes and vegetables in South Africa. So, yes, um, I'm glad to be on your show today. Happiness, happiness. So, firstly, maybe just explain to us what does Bayer, uh, what does the company Bayer do? Um, and specifically, when you're saying you're the go-to-market manager, what does that exactly mean? <laughs> Molly is yes, Bayer is a very big company, uh, a global company. We are in pharmaceuticals, we in uh, seed, and we in crop science as well. Uh, so yes, uh, my responsibility is the um, the development of strategy and alignment of uh, the salespeople uh, in field uh, to, um, to 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 align with our strategy. Uh, for the future and, and so on. So yes, uh, the go-to-market strategy leader uh, is, is somebody that is very knowledgeable in the field of, of his expertise and he or her um, sort of show the way for the future. And that is, uh, in short, my responsibility uh, with Bayer at this stage. Fantastic. So um, today we mentioned that we're going to talk about potato farming because I believe that it's also your area of expertise. So maybe just break it down to us. What, what, you know, if one wants to venture into potato farming, um, what type of land size should I be considering? What are the best regions to farm potatoes? And how does one make a success out of potato farming? Mbali, yes, uh, potatoes in South Africa is planted uh, right through the season. 
right through from summer right through to winter. There's always somebody that plant potatoes and somebody that harvests fresh potatoes. So we're in a fortunate position that, you know, there is certain areas in South Africa uh, that they plant potatoes like in Limpopo, in the Gauteng area, Western Free State and KwaZulu Natal and down in the Western Cape. Okay, you ask me what is the important thing about potatoes. Say for instance, if you want to start with potatoes, the first thing is that you have to do your research. Will potatoes fit into in that area? Is it suitable to plant your potatoes in that area? Mm. Is the soil suitable to plant potatoes? What is the the pest and the diseases that can attack your potatoes. And lastly, uh, is also at the end of the day, you have to send your final product to the fresh produce market or to the processors or uh, one of those markets. So you have to investigate those markets. There, but because at the end of the day, you have to make money to, 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 to produce, uh, to, to, to plant potatoes. And potatoes mm. is very expensive. That vary it from 100,000 rand a hectare up to 200 to 250,000 rand a hectare. So it's very, wow. very expensive. So you can't afford to make a mistake. So yeah. my first, uh, to answer your question, first of all, do your homework. See if it will, will fit into your rotation, fit in your form. And mm. another thing is with potatoes, we always say you need the, the, the implements, you need, you have to have a planter, you have to have an irrigation, you have to have a lifter, you have to have a spray rig, and lastly, you have to have a sorting space where you can sort your potatoes. So mm -hmm. it is a high input cost. The second, mm -hmm. Secondly, I will say, um, start small and grow into it. So that if you if you make a mistake, it's on a smaller scale, and you don't have a you know you 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 manage your risk on a smaller scale as where if you open the gates and you start and you plant big hectares, the you know the risk mm. is just too high and your input cost is very very high in potatoes. Mm. Yes, and then there's quite a few things other that you can make use of. Uh, there's a lot of expertise in the field. Um, you know, your, your, your distribution companies that distribute chemicals and, and fertilizers and so on. They have a very knowledgeable people in the specific areas that will guide you uh, to uh, make a success if you want to start to plant potatoes. Another mm. thing is what a potato grower must take in consideration is, remember you plant seed potatoes and that is a tuber that is produced by a seed grower. And always buy certified seed because there okay. is a guarantee on certified seed uh, that you also as part of your whole process of, of manage risk uh, at the end of the day. Okay, and then lastly is uh, potatoes is economical of scale. You have to have a high yield, a high yield and high quality of potatoes mm -hmm. market at the right time, mm. at the right market to get the right, the, the best uh, price for your, for your potatoes. Jeez, Andre, it sounds very technical, you know, everything that you're saying about, um, yes, your, your advice is to say start small so that, you know, when you do fail, at least you don't lose as much in your investment as opposed to going big. Um, and I like how you just mentioned the technicalities around sprouting, around the fact that we also need to farm potatoes with irrigation, because, you know, without water, farming does become a little bit tricky, especially with high value crops such as potatoes. So, you know, we've had a lot of rains around December, January, February period. And um, with, with your knowledge and, and maybe uh, the farmers that you've worked with, how have they um, mitigated the risks or still kept their farm businesses in survival mode, rather in survival mode with all these climate change um, 
um, different variables happening in various parts of the provinces in, in, in the country? Mbali, yes. Um, the, the potato farmer, uh, he must watch the weather. Because <laughs> potatoes is very acceptable in chains of weather patterns. Uh, and if you just look at the spray program, and if you see yeah. there is a cold front coming in of a lot of rain, you must uh, spray preventative for mm. certain diseases. Mm. And my advice to a farmer is uh, do not wait until the disease or the pest is on the farm. Create mm. or develop a spray program that is preventative. Mm. A good measurement is what you do before flowering determines your, your, your success hour f uh, after flowering. So, yes, okay. in, in Bayer, we have quite a, we have a very nice portfolio to uh, make provision for all the different pests and diseases that you can pick up during the growing season. If I can just start at uh, when you plant. At planting, sure. there's, there's a big problem with two uh, things that you must keep in mind. First of all is uh, nematodes. So yeah. we have a product with the name uh, Willem Prime that control uh, nematodes. And the second one there is uh, Imestosolver is one of our new uh, products that we will launch be busy launching it, and that uh, control rosectonia. Those two uh, products play a vital role in the appearance of your potato that you want to sell to the housewife. The potatoes is well researched. It, uh, the products is well researched, and if you use it according to the label, uh, you will have good results. Okay, so we cover the the planting and what's happening under the soil. And secondly, mm. when the potatoes start to grow, then there's uh, a fungus, a fungus diseases that can attack your potatoes and there is certain insects that can attack your uh, potatoes. And therefore we have um, a good portfolio. We have uh, Antraco, Folicare, Nativo, Infinitu for the fungus diseases mm -hmm. and then we have a uh, disease bulldog and belt to control your moth uh, diseases and there's other companies that also supply uh, products to control for instance uh, leaf miner uh, we mm -hmm. can't we can't supply everything to the to, to the potato grower so you have to make mm -hmm. use of other companies that, that that support a spraying program during the season Okay, come back to your original question about the weather and, and, and so on. Yes, weather is a critical factor. If you have too much rain, your, your fertilizer leach out and your plant come under stress and then they develop them, uh, certain diseases and so on. So you always have to measure what happened with the weather and what you're going to do mm. during the growing season. So if you look mm. at the growing season of potatoes, it's anything between uh, um, three, ach, four to five months that the potatoes grow. And you have mm -hmm. to make provision for your pests and your diseases every seven to ten days you have to spray. And that's part of the mm. buy in, input cost uh, uh, at the end of the day. Mm. Okay. The weather is also... Important, especially in the eastern free state where there is uh, quite a bit of uh, dryland uh, plantings that uh, are taking place. So those yeah. uh, farmers depend on rain. Okay. Uh, and they don't have irrigation where you can just switch it on and say there is water. So they depend for water uh, that we blessed in South Africa. Yes, uh, yeah. that's a risk. So my advice is to Eastern Free State uh, farmers, is you know your farm, you know where your best land is, and you know also what is the water capacity in your land. Use them for potatoes, due to the fact that mm -hmm. you manage the risk the whole time. 
Yes, um, to conclude, uh, Mbali, from Bayer, we try to advise our farmers to look out, uh, look at the weather and make a management decision in connection with the agents in the field to prevent anything that can happen during that time where the weather changes or you have lots of rain or all those things. Mm. So yes, Mbali, uh, we try to advise our farmers to be successful. Fantastic. And sticking on to that advice, Andre, um, at the start of the production season, do you go out, do you work with the farmers to say, this is how your soil analysis looks like? Maybe instead of planting a plant population of 100,000, you need to maybe do 80, you know, or maybe go to 120. Do you also assist the farmers with the growing program around pesticide management? Yes, uh, we in Bayer, we specialized in, in, in crop protection. Yes. Uh, there is um, some other companies like your uh, fertilizer companies that do the soil analysis and then they recommend the correct fertilizer and blend and, and, and so on for the farmer. Uh, then there's the seed companies that advise the farmer which seed and which cultivar to use. And every area okay. have, uh, let's call it a set of rules. Yes. Where you know that you have to plant your plant population have to be that so many plants per hectare, and then you will produce a, a, a very high yield. From Bayer's side, uh, for us is that we uh, give a lot of training for our agents in the field. We empower them with knowledge and we give them uh, access to sell our products in the field that they can, uh, with the help of, of the assistance of, uh, of our area managers in, in the different areas that knows the area, knows exactly what to look, then they develop a, a crop protection program for the farmer, but it is not cast in stone. Remember what I said about the weather. So you yeah. have, a, you have something that you can work on, but you can change mm. it during the season as a certain uh, problems arise and, and you have to make provision for certain things. And that's yeah. the role of buyer in the production of potatoes. Yeah. Tell me, Andre, do you guys work with industry associations? Because as you're talking, I also was reminded that, oh, there's a Potato South Africa uh, Association. Do you work with the, the industry association, maybe to bring in, um, maybe with your partners, like the seed partners, good varieties? Do you guys engage with the association to say, these are the right pesticides, you know, for this season, maybe from your research and development? Because I know that organizations like yourselves pride themselves with the quality of inputs that you sell out to the market. So my question is, do you work with industry associations like Potato South Africa, to give them expert advice on how to successfully grow this commodity? Bali, yes. Uh, Potato South Africa and Potato Certification uh, Services is a very, very important partner for us due to the fact that uh, we use their plot platforms to uh, introduce new innovation innovation mm. uh, we, we introduce our new chemistry we uh, mm. communicate with uh, our farmers uh, but we um, we in a partnership that we use their platform or we sponsor platforms that we can 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 uh, communicate to our uh, farmers out there uh, another important part is what potato certification and potato South Africa play is that uh, they have uh, information available and as a strategic manager for me it's important to if you don't measure you can't manage you know so we use uh, the the platforms where they publicized on 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 potato South Africa way, uh, website mm. or certification website we use those information to manage um, in South Africa. You asked me about seed. Um, 
potato seeds, we don't have anything to do with potato seed in South Africa. There's other companies that okay. specialized in that. Um, okay. One thing that uh, the Potato South Africa have uh, certain work groups in different areas. Mm -hmm. And we use those work groups to demonstrate say for instance a buyer product or a buyer spray program or new innovation and mm. the information that we gather on 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 on, on work group level is fantastic for the farmer because it's information mm. that he can use mm. in his area and he gets specific answers uh, for his problem and he can uh, manage risk with those information that we we yeah. we collect uh, in in this it's not a strange relationship <laughs> but everybody <laughs> make use of this uh, uh, those platforms yeah. and work groups to, to, yeah. to uh, communicate with our client at the end of the day and uh, yeah. client is our farmers. Absolutely, absolutely. As I let go of you, Andre, I think you've just, you know, unpacked the specific commodity quite technically. Um, and it's not a, it's not, it's not a, a conversation we have every single day. And you've literally um, displayed the intricacies around potato farming. And I guess this is the reason why there's not so many players farming potatoes, because yes, it is a big staple crop. It's a very important one around the South African landscape, but also it's very difficult to master. So maybe leave us with a fun fact, you know, um, from your knowledge, uh, do you know how big, uh, do you know any big potato farmers in South Africa? You don't have to mention their names, but maybe just give us a fun fact of the biggest potato producer is producing on how many uh, hectares of lands? Shoot, sure. <laughs> yes, uh, that is, uh, <laughs> uh, yes, um, we have uh, very big uh, seed growers in the Western Free State area. Um, they produce a lot in high quality of seed. And then we have uh, very big uh, potato growers in the Eastern Free State, Ryland uh, growers that produce yeah. um anything between 300 and 400 to 500 hectares at a time. And wow. then in Lepopo, we have uh, farmers there between 200 and 400 hectares as well that uh, produce uh, potatoes uh, for South Africa. But uh, my message to anybody that uh, eat a potato is... Um, <laughs> Have respect for that potato because there's a lot of uh, work and yeah. knowledge and uh, and 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 risk and input yeah. cost that go into produce a potato. And yeah. it's such a it's such a fantastic um, uh, commodity, and it gives for so many people in South Africa jobs and 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 so on. It is just a very exciting industry to be in and yeah. uh, for my for my potato farmers the the one thing that i can tell them is um all the best for the growing yeah. season make provision <laughs> for the uh, things that you don't know what can happen uh, prevention yeah. is always better than care and uh, you know uh, your success is our success and uh, mm. from by your side we have a big team or a very knowledgeable team in the field mm. that can assist you so that you can be successful at the end of the day. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Andre, for your time. That was a, a fantastic conversation. And yeah, you've left me with that note to say, now we must all have respect for our mashed potatoes, our sweet potatoes, and more so our chips that we consume um, uh, 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 for, 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 for consumers around the country. So yeah, it's a different message that you've put out there. But trust me, next time I eat a chip, I will think of that farmer in mind. <laughs> Thank you, Molly. Really appreciate it. And I really enjoyed talking to you. 
Likewise, that was Andre Vidoy, um, the go-to market manager from Bayer Crops uh, Crop Division, and we were discussing and maybe slightly unpacking the um, the potato industry. Basically, um, getting to know from his uh, um, advice how many hectares one should start with, and he mentioned also besides land, it's cricket, it's critical to have the right equipment, the right mechanization to be able to plant your potatoes. Um, weed uh, the areas around your potatoes and more and more, more importantly harvest the potatoes because it's quite a delicate crop it needs special care and attention and he mentioned that the rough or average um, uh, input cost per hectare is about a hundred thousand and it can all go all the way about about up to two hundred thousand per hectare so you have to make sure that if you're investing in such a niche commodity, make sure that you have your ducks in a row, reach out to the Bayer team who could assist you from a pesticide management perspective, um, and also work with your seed reps, um, work with your chemical reps to um, really help you uh, come up with a very tight growing program that will help you also mitigate your risk once you start your production. That's it for me. Like I said, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and continue to like, subscribe, in our YouTube channel and continue to support the farming podcast. See you next.